Welcome to the Church Solutions Podcast, brought to you by JSL Solutions. The Church Solutions Podcast is designed to help equip you and your church in the use of technology and other tools and services. And now, here are your hosts, Steve Lacey and Phil Thompson. And hello, everyone. Welcome again to another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. My name is Phil Thompson. And I'm Steve Lacey. Good to have you here, Steve, again. How is your day going? We're doing good today. Yeah. How are you? Yeah, doing really well. So uh, we're uh, if you're new to us, we do a weekly podcast, and we uh, work exclusively with churches and ministries for the most part. Uh, we're a company that does streaming video. We also have mobile apps. We also have website templates and some content delivery stuff. So, uh, But we, we'll talk a lot about technical things for churches, but because we, all of us here have a a extensive background in uh, volunteering and working with churches. I've had experience in pastoral work for many years. So we will sometimes get off into areas that will help encourage pastors and volunteers. But today we're going back into the tech area, aren't we, Steve? We are. We're, We're getting very streaming oriented. Yes, we're back to our roots here. So today we have a special guest. His name is Paul Richards, Paul William Richards. And he is now an author. He's actually the uh, streaming officer at uh, PTZ Optics. Uh, And we're going to talk a little bit about PTZ cameras. But we want to talk a little bit about his new book that came out. So, Paul, thanks for being with us today. Phil, Steve, thank you so much for having me today. Oh, it's good to have you here. We're glad to be here with you. And this new book uh, that just came out is called, well, tell us, what's the official title? It just came out, so we have not read it yet. But uh, tell us what it is and what it's all about. Sure. So the book is called Helping Your Church Live Stream, How to Spread the Message of God with Live Streaming. And uh, it's about 150 pages, and it includes a complete guide on how to get started, how to accept digital donations online, whether it be through Facebook and YouTube. goes through a lot of the technical stuff, but also tells a personal story about my wife who uh, came to live with me in Pennsylvania, and she is originally from St. Louis, Missouri, and I really wanted to help her connect with her hometown church that really felt like she got uprooted when she came out to live here with me on the East Coast. And uh, so I was able to donate a church to uh, donate a church, donate a live streaming system to her hometown church and kind of explain what that did for her. Uh, able to now watch, you know, Christmas services with her hometown pastor and watch, you know, family members, children getting baptized in her hometown t- church that she would have never been able to see. So a little bit of a personal story, but it also goes through really an implementation guide for pastors, church media, volunteers. And then it also includes a complete glossary of technical terms that might might seem like another language for some pastors. Mm. That sounds like a really good resource. And you're in the uh, you're in Pennsylvania right now. You are in uh, Downingtown, PA. Is that that's pretty close to Philadelphia, isn't it? That's right. We're not too far from Philadelphia. Only two hours from New York City, and um, we have a little studio over here where we live stream uh, twice a week. Ah, cool, awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's a neat story about your wife. Yeah. It reminds me of we've had people in our church that would. That would travel overseas, and they would they would make time to to participate in the services when they were you know it was evening time in uh, Italy, but uh, they were joining us and for the morning Sunday morning things, and it was really cool. And yeah, it's it's great that uh, she can still stay connected with her hometown church. Yeah, yeah that, that she... was the inspiration of the for really for the book. Wow, that's that's great. So this book is uh, so if somebody's interested in streaming video, uh, this would be a good book to get. Uh, I wrote a book. Uh, how long, by the way? How long did it take you to write this book? Well, I had been sitting on the topic for quite a long time, and I've been blogging on the topic for years. So uh, I had had uh, maybe twenty or thirty blog posts that covered different parts portions of it. Uh, so it probably took me about six months because I had so much of the content already published uh, online. Uh, but I really felt like uh, what you find out there a lot of times are blog posts, right? That are 5,000 words. And sometimes they raise more questions than they answer because you're getting a lot of information, but it's not a complete story. Right. Um, so as an author, as a blog writer, 
um, I decided to really organize it into a full book that's available on Kindle and paperback and then also uh, as an audio book if a pastor would like to just take a walk in the park and listen to it. It's about uh, two and a half hours to listen to it uh, in the car or you know on your smartphone. Yeah. I, I just asked that question is well, how long it took you because uh, it's a sore, sore spot with Steve and I because it took me when I wrote my book took me like five years or something to write. But, <laughs> um, it was yeah. not quite five years, but it took him quite a while. I was quite on him for a long time. How's that book uh, coming? Yeah. <laughs> what book is that? All right, so help helping your church so, live stream. So you mentioned a couple of things, and uh, I'll probably follow up maybe after the broadcast. But I I, I ordered the the physical book. But I am a big Audible, and I haven't read a physical book in a long time, but I listen to all my books. And you mentioned it's available on audio? Yes. So um, it's about two and a half hours uh, of audio content. And um, Audible, Amazon owns Audible, and they make it really easy to pair your Audible book with the Amazon. In fact, it's interesting. You might be interested in this, Steve, uh, with your book, but Kindle now, if you start reading the book on Kindle and then you walk into you know, your, your car, for example, it'll actually start the audiobook where you left off on, in the Kindle app. Oh, okay. Nice. Very nice. So, so I can get the book on Audible as well. That's right. Oh, shoot. Okay. Man, blew that. I, have, I have credits to burn with Audible. I've been getting behind. <laughs> so. Yeah. Steve is an audible person. All right. So sounds like a great book, Helping Your Church Live Stream. Uh, and again, it's by uh, Paul Paul Richards. Yeah, but let, let's talk, uh, unless you want to keep going this, I, I really am very interested in, in PTZ cameras. And I know that that's part of what you do. And I have customers and people that call us all the time at streamingchurch.tv and talk to us. And they're like, hey, what about PTZ cameras? So tell us, first of all, what is a PTZ camera and, and why is it something we should be interested in? Sure. So that's really how I got my, my start in the, uh, in the streaming industry. Uh, PTZ stands for pan, tilt, and zoom. And it's generally a camera that can be controlled remotely uh, so that you could imagine at, at, in this day and age, here we are in 2019, you can get a pan tilt zoom camera that's smaller than almost a football and it can be discreetly placed almost anywhere in your you know, church or, or facility and it can provide a great video signal, whether that comes from SDI, which is our traditional broadcast cable, HDMI, which plugs into a normal monitor, or now uh, Ethernet. Uh, there's a couple different protocols. One of them is called NDI um, that allows you to connect these cameras directly to your live streaming software, whether it be OBS, Wirecast, vMix, uh, Livestream Studio, the TriCasters. And they've really, over the past two to three years, I've kind of seen it happen where it just makes so much sense for uh, many different organizations because we don't have cameramen. We might not have a platform in the middle of a church to have a tripod. And it's really just discreet and remotely controllable. Uh, and they're actually quite affordable now as well. So so tell me more about, I should probably be aware of this, but uh, so there, there's IP cameras out there, right? And or is it this, this the PTZs act as an IP camera? You just connect them to your network and then OBS and Wirecast will be able to see them? Yes, um, that's probably, and in, in the book, it, it, it actually, it's interesting. So in the book, there's a whole chapter on IP networking because uh, IP networking and IP streaming network connectivity is really going to save churches so much money and open up so many doors because a single Ethernet cable, which is incredibly uh, affordable, right? Ethernet cable, everyone knows what it is. Everyone has a network switch. Cat5e cabling you can buy in bulk very affordably. You can uh, terminate Cat5e. So if you need to run a Cat5 cable 200 feet, no problem. You run it through the walls and you can terminate it with a crimper. You don't need a, like an, a soldering iron. Mm -hmm. You know, Volunteers can do this stuff uh, very easily. You can look at a YouTube video and make these cables affordably. But the other thing is that they can power the cameras so you no longer have to hire an electrician, which could cost hundreds of dollars. So we say just 
by running your own Ethernet cable, you can save up to 30 to 40% on a given project just by using power over Ethernet and not having to pay for electricians. But regardless of that, the biggest uh, hurdle, the biggest roadblock for churches and most organizations is simple understanding of networking. So probably the most advanced expert chapter in the book, and I really just saved it to the, it's like the second to last chapter because you can understand, I'm, I'm trying to get people to understand the power of digital donations. And, you know, I think that the live streaming on Facebook and YouTube and the ability to accept donations directly through Facebook and YouTube is the number one way that churches can increase first time giving uh, for sure. And maybe even just donations uh, overall. But uh, being able to understand just basic networking uh, is going to make things so much more affordable for churches. So a network switch is somewhere in the uh, church. Most pastors um, is usually it's put it, it's installed and the guy who installed it's gone, right? <laughs> yeah. We don't know. We, we have to call him. Uh, he went all Jason Bourne on us and he's gone. <laughs> So where is the network switch? We're not exactly sure. Probably one closet somewhere around there. Um, so I give a lot of tips about, you know, trying to get documentation in place, keeping a three ring binder so that when someone does come in and they want to help, even if they're taking uh, the book comes with a free online course as well and they're taking the course or maybe they're reading the book, you know, to start to gather a three ring binder and take, take this into, into your own control because uh, it can be, it's so much more affordable than it was three or four years ago. Yeah, and I can attest to the, the making of the cables piece, actually, when we moved into our church building, which has now been 11, 12 years yeah. ago, something like that, Phil. Yeah, at least, yeah, at least, like at least 11 yes, or maybe more. Yeah. Seems like yesterday, but, um, I, I helped at the church and someone just taught me how to terminate ethernet and I'd never done it before. And you're right. It was very simple and then and he had a little tool to ring it out to make sure i i wired it right and it was you know it was very simple very straightforward just with a crimp tool and and a um, connectivity tool you can tell that you know it was it was easy making cables i had no idea yeah that's cool that's really good so uh, all right so ptc cameras uh, now look uh when they came out a few years ago maybe longer i remember that it was really you know they're they're built their uh pan tilt zoom as you so eloquently put that paul but uh there was times there it was kind of herky jerky back in the in the older days so you know if you did try to follow somebody on the platform uh many times you know the camera would get way ahead of them or way behind them or you try to zoom in and it's like you know all of a sudden you're looking at the guy's uh, chest and not his face uh those areas have improved in many of those cameras am i correct yes i definitely and uh, there's been so many improvements over the years that i've been kind of following closely because of you know who i am in the industry um one of the really popular ways of controlling the ptc cameras now is a smartphone or an ipad um, there's some really great uh, iOS and Android applications that allow you it. They and the interesting thing is you could have multiple volunteers, two or three of them, uh, each one of them controlling a different camera uh, with their smartphones, totally wirelessly, and um, they can choose the speed at which they would like the camera to pan, tilt, and zoom each individually. So if if you're following a pastor, generally you want to have a slow uh, pan left and right. You know, you don't want it to go zip back too fast left or right, uh, but that could change depending on how far you are zoomed in. Um, and then the tilt, generally, you don't want it to tilt very fast at all because you, you've got the you've got it zoomed in. Maybe you've got you can see the pastor's feet and you can see a little bit of clearance above their head, but you don't need to go up and down a whole lot. You just need to follow them left and right. right. So having the ability to, to individually turn off the tilt almost or maybe really make it minimal so that if you push all the way up on the joystick, uh, it still just very slowly pans up because you don't need to. And it can remove, uh, you know, the possible error of a joystick operator to go, you know, like you were saying, too far one way or the other. So there's the there's the uh, unique operation of a joystick. And then there are also individual controls for speeds in between camera presets. And I should explain what a camera preset is. So one of the great things about PTZ cameras is that they can store 
you know, upwards of 200 camera presets. And that would be a specific zoom and pan and tilt position. So imagine you, you zoom the camera into a podium where the pastor is standing and it's a head and shoulder shot with a little bit of the podium on the bottom and a little bit of clearance above their head on the top. You can save that position to let's say preset one and then have the, the camera zoom out and save that as cam, uh, preset two, have a position on the choir preset three. And then from a volunteer's perspective, if you have two or three cameras, generally what they're doing is just hitting, all right, camera two, preset three. Okay, now let's transition that live. And then the camera that's off live, right, because you have a preview and a live screen, generally on the left is the camera preview, on the right is the output. On the preview side, the audience has no idea that the volunteers are you know, getting the camera to zoom in directly where they want to transition to right. for the next shot. Yeah, yeah. So you've, you've got a whole, it's like a little studio setup is basically what it well, is. Well, I mean, presets are, that would be, we have PTZs at our church right now, um, but either we don't have the capability to do presets or we just may not be aware that that capability is out there. So I was unaware that you could set pre presets on the PTZs because we spend a lot of time getting the guys driving the, the cameras to get the shot right. And so there's a lot of tweaking going on. If we just said, hey, you know, go to preset six and that would be really nice. Because, you know, at, at churches, I can see where it comes in really handy because the pastor is going to stand near the podium or he's going to stand in the same kind of places every time. So presets I could see would really come in handy. Yeah, and you mentioned, uh, Steve, about trying to follow the pastor and maybe there is a more energ energetic pastor that's going back and forth a lot. Generally, what will happen is if, if the operator does, you know, start looks like they're falling behind or it's going to lose, they'll just switch to a wide shot. Mm -hmm. So from like you said a little mini it's amazing what you can do even with obs in studio mode now obs uh recently i think it's been about a year or two now has studio mode so you can have this preview and live output uh option where you know if, if it looks like the joystick operator is losing the pasture you just fade out to the wide shot and then if it looks like wow he's got a great close-up then you just you just choose to fade to that that input yeah i think one of the the most um, beneficial use of the PTZ was actually at a church we saw here. And the fact that it can be discreet is, you know, th this church had set a, one of their PTZs up on like in front of the first aisle of the, you know, of the sanctuary. And so they had a really close shot and they could follow um, what was going on up close and it didn't you didn't have a camera guy standing you know on the front row and detracting all the attention away from everybody it was set low and out of the way and that was kind of i thought that was a really unique use of a ptz mm. yeah so paul let, let's say i'm a pastor listening to this podcast or or a, you know a key volunteer in the tech area and this you know you've sparked my interest here with this uh, how many PTZ should I get? Should I start with one? Should I start with two? Should I start with eight? Uh, tell me, tell me what would be a good setup. Say I'm a church of about 200 people. Uh, you know, what, what is it I would need to make this thing without blowing the budget per se, but yet at the same time, you know, getting something that's fairly decent. Well, um, one of the great things about live streaming today is that really all you need is a computer and, you know, it can't be the oldest computer in the building. Uh, probably it should be the newest computer in the building. <laughs> um, but a laptop will do with an i5 processor. Uh, I like to, to suggest Windows, but it, uh, many, many of the churches I work with uh, are Mac users. And it doesn't matter, right? Mac, PC, just a computer. It should be on the newer end. Uh, that'll, that'll probably benefit you as you try to grow. Um, there's something magical about two cameras. For, and we talked about this, right? If you just have one PTZ camera, everyone on in the recordings and on the live stream are, is going to see all of the movement as you go from one camera preset to the next. Now, we mentioned that you can change the speeds of the presets, so it could be a nice slow pan left to right. But once you get two cameras, and it could literally be one PTZ camera and one webcam, 
right? Just any two video sources. Now you can switch to a wide shot, operate that PTZ and get it into a nice close up where it's just right and then fade to it. And as soon as you get to that second camera, now it looks like a television production because as you switch back and forth, the PTZ is showing you multiple different angles and looks uh you know as you set them up so it really just that two camera setup and then you know many churches i know have five six i think six to eight is about as much as i've seen but um for various different reasons sometimes they we have ptc optics has static cameras as well and there are small wide angle cameras that churches put in the drum cage or <laughs> behind the scenes and there's a lot of different reasons where they put cameras and it, you can go a little crazy sometimes but um yeah, just, just two cameras is where I think the magic happens. And it doesn't have to be even two PTZ cameras. Mm -hmm. hmm. Interesting. Yeah, it's definitely technology just continues to improve and, and it's making it easier and easier for people to stream. So you got SDI stuff you mentioned earlier, USB stuff. You've got NDI, which, and, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but you mentioned the NDI models uh, connect really well with OBS live encoders and vMix, right? That's right, yeah, and, and NDI is a IP-based networking okay. protocol, so it's just a little bit of understanding of how networks work. Right. I've worked with so many pastors who have never set an IP address before, um, you know, they've never searched for a camera on their network. Uh, we have tutorials and guides on how to do all of that, um, but that was one of the other, like, kind of passions of, of the book. I spent the most time trying to simplify the world of IP, even if you read, read it once or twice and just start to familiarize yourself with what DHCP is, which is a dynamic uh, host, uh, basically the automatic way to set an IP address for a mm -hmm. camera. Some of these simple, or I, I consider them simple, but I know it's like Chinese for a lot of pastors. Um, just familiarizing yourself with networking, even if it's a volunteer that's doing it or someone who's championing, championing your program, um, that the NDI will really save you a ton of money because you don't need to run SDI cables, which are expensive. You can power the cameras over Ethernet. It works directly with almost every live streaming software from OBS to Wirecast to vMix to Livestream Studio to TriCasters. The list goes on and on. And you just plug in one Ethernet cable to the camera. It powers it, it sends video, and you can control it as well. So it's like a renaissance, really, uh, with what you can do and a really big money saver as well. And, and the big part of that, though, is cable runs because you don't, if you have an HDMI camera, you're going to be limited to, I don't I haven't memorized the links. Do you know those? Um, but no, with the far. NDI, it's how far can you go running an Ethernet cable before you have to add a switch or something? Is there a so, limit? So, well, HDMI is what a lot of people are so familiar with. And, right. and as you mentioned, uh, it really can only go 50 feet reliably yeah. okay. um, to be able to do 1080p video and even less if you're going to jump into the 4K realm. Um, SDI, depending on the quality of the cable and the resolution you're trying to get, is generally can go about 100 to 300. But it's, it's even less than Ethernet, which can go 100 meters, 328 feet. So you can go further. It's less expensive. It's more common. It's easier to work with. Yeah. All right. So, so uh, we've got a couple more minutes here in the podcast. Uh, let's talk price here. And I know prices are going to vary, but I mean, are we talking, if I was going to get two NDI model uh, PTZ cameras for my church, a couple cameras, uh, and, I, and I'm assuming you're going to need uh, something more than just a camera's producer system, I guess. Uh, what I mean, just an all ballpark idea. What would it cost me? An idea. Sure. So let's assume that you have a laptop and you're using OBS, which is a free live streaming software. Right. In order for OBS to work with NDI, you do need to install a plugin for OBS. It's called the NDI OBS plugin. Okay. Um, and a, a, lo a lot of churches will look into the NDI cameras. We have what's called a Z cam, which just has zoom. It doesn't have the pan tilt functionality. It just remotely can be zoomed. And that starts at less than a thousand. Okay. The robotic cameras that have really all that functionality of zooming in and out of all the different locations, those start with the NDI models start less than 2000. Okay. Um, 
the SDI models and the, the USB models, which are also quite popular for churches because there's no capture card needed. You can plug USB directly into your computer and have all the same PTZ functionality. Those start at less than uh, $16.99. And then, um, yeah, that's it. They go the most expensive one now. We have a NDI 30X model and a 30X optical zoom. Uh, can zoom in from 75 feet away and get a head and shoulders shot of a pastor that is uh, has a really high end. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think Olympus lens, and that one I think is 23.99. Okay, okay, all right. So some uh, some choices that, that that can be made, and people listening to this podcast, if you uh, if you want to go to Paul's website, uh, he works for PT zoptics.com so p-t-z-o-p-t-i-c-s.com is that's correct right paul that's correct yeah you, you got it uh, p-t-z-optics.com would be the place to go and then uh you know we've been talking about his book off and on here you can get the book it's called helping your church live stream by paul w william richards and it's available on amazon and as uh, they as steven and uh, paul were talking earlier you know you can get the audible uh, or you can get, you know, something with the paperback or Kindle or uh, uh, what else can you get it in? I guess those are the main formats, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, you can get the first three chapters for free on a little uh, web page that I started, which is churchstreamers.com. It's just a little web page for the book, and you can get the first three chapters for free. Okay, good. Good deal. All right. Awesome. Steve, any last questions here for our guest? Um, I didn't know there was, you mentioned USB models. What's, um, is there a, a constraint on the length for the USB as well? Yes, a very a big constraint, actually. It really only suggested to use the USB 3.0 models when they're nine feet away. So just okay. uh, three okay. meters uh, from your, now there are USB 3.0 extensions. They're expensive and they're, they actually fail quite a lot. Uh, so traditional SDI and Ethernet are really what we, we suggest for most churches because the cameras are generally far away from right. where the, yeah. the computer is. Yeah. Yeah. And the Good sanctuaries deal. are typically pretty big. Yes, they are. All right. So we got an expert here, folks. And so if uh, people want to get a hold of you, Paul, uh, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Well, uh, I think you could, I'd be happy to share my email, which is paul, P-A-U-L dot Richards, R-I-C-H-A-R-D-S, at ptzoptics.com. All right. That's, that's, uh, that's one way. And, of course, folks, if you didn't catch that, you can always uh, contact us, and we'll uh, relay the information to Paul. You just send us an email, support at streamingchurch.tv. That's one of our domains. Support at streamingchurch.tv, and we can certainly get the uh, – forward the information over to Paul if you want to talk to him about some more things. This has been good. You are a very good resource, Paul. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me on, guys. All right, great. Get the book, guys. It's uh, it's something I think that would be worth your while. And uh, with that in mind, I think we will wrap things up. So I'm Phil Thompson. The guy on the other side is Steve Lacey. And we've been talking with Paul Richards today, our guest. Uh, and uh, again, if you need anything, contact us. And we will catch you next time on another edition of the Church Solutions Podcast. Take care.